The second opens the door. Oh no, this is gonna call safety support. Robo taxi companies like Waymo are popping up in cities across the country, but will they ever become as widespread as rideshare services like Uber and Lyft? To find out, I'm taking a ride myself to see what it's really like. The Waymo has just arrived. Um, it's waiting for us down the street and it has my initials on top of the car, which is a way that you can ensure it's your car and not somebody else's. Okay, here comes another Waymo. Hello, Rebecca. Hello, Waymo. Okay. We just started our ride and we are actually at a very tricky intersection here. We're trying to make a left across traffic. There's like a delivery truck. We just barely cleared that delivery truck. Um, and Waymo actually was a little bit more um, adventurous in that turn than I thought it was going to be. A lot of the reviews are that it's very cautious. That wasn't dangerous, but that was, I used to live in New York. That was a little bit of New York driving, a little bit of assertiveness there, which I can appreciate. I will say like a lot of Waymo riders who are taking their first ride, it is strange to see the steering wheel move without hands. And there's a nice little reminder on the steering wheel to not touch it, which um, I'm not gonna attempt. But it didn't take long for me to feel more comfortable. I'm pretty quickly getting used to the idea of not having a driver, <laughs> to be honest. For instance, like, we just came up to a yellow light and I think a lot of drivers would have tried to rush that light and get through. And I actually really appreciate that. Waymo just said, you know what, I'm gonna slow down and I'm gonna stop and I don't need to rush through it. I can certainly see a situation in which you would really want a driver. Like if there was an accident that happened or if for some reason the Waymo got lost, it'd be really frustrating not to have a driver. Though on the console, we could call customer support. Also, I've been there before and I know a lot of other people, especially women have been there before, where you get into a rideshare and you don't feel great about the driver for whatever reason. It just doesn't feel safe. So. I can see how getting into Waymo or another robo taxi would make you just feel more confident and a little bit safer, and maybe for some people, a lot safer. And we can see on the screen what Waymo sees to give riders that feeling that they know what's going on, which I can also appreciate. The second opens the door. Cool. Till we all get oh, up. now it's dinging at you. Yeah. Oh no, this is gonna call safety support. A little funny thing just happened. Um, we were preparing to get out of the car and unbuckled a safety belt and Waymo started beeping at us and actually said, everyone needs to be buckled and if you don't buckle up, we're gonna call customer safety. Not quite like that. They said customer safety may call you. Uh, so good to know that Waymo can detect when you unbuckle your safety belt and when that's not safe. So we made it to our destination and I actually really enjoyed the Waymo ride. Yeah, there was no human driver and thankfully we didn't need one, but it felt safe, it felt pretty cautious, and I like that. But as seamless as my ride was, it's still somewhat of a rarity. I live in San Francisco, one of the few cities where Waymo operates. So where will they go next? To date, we've done over 4 million public rides. We started in Chandler you know, a suburb of Phoenix where folks said, yeah, but that's easy, very open roads, very slow speeds. And then we went to San Francisco and it was, yeah, but you're not really in a big city. Then we were able to actually grow the service into downtown San Francisco. San Francisco as a whole is a very foggy city. And then we ended up in Los Angeles. So what you're going to see is this development of the Waymo driver to account for and to generalize and to be able to handle all sorts of conditions, be it weather or other. We are taking our vehicles to Tahoe and to Buffalo and to all these very snowy conditions to start to gather data, to understand what it will take for our sensors, for our hardware, for our software, et cetera. And what we can expect is to see this exact ramp that we've seen played out over the last few years to go from a service that works almost anywhere. We have partnered very recently with Uber in getting AVs to mass adoption in Austin and Atlanta. And we have partnered with uh, Move.io to bring Waymo to Miami. The goal is to get to bringing this service to the masses. And we will obviously go in a very uh, deliberate, in a very methodical way as we reach scale. So I could see us going to many, many different cities. But as far as you know, technical capability, it's only a matter of time People tend to be maybe apprehensive when they take their first ride and they're worried about safety. 
we have proven that we are 81% uh, fewer crashes with airbag deployment compared to human drivers. 78% fewer injury causing crashes. Human drivers may fall asleep at the wheel. They may drink and drive, right? They may be impaired in some way. So for really the average person, we want to build an experience that is much better than traditional ride hailing services. We really do think that there is a multi-transportation uh, option future where we can be synonymous with rideshare, we can be synonymous with any other transportation option, but in a world where multiple options definitely exist. It's clear Waymo is confident in its ability to bring its services to the masses. And with over 40 million miles of real world driving, they're putting in the work. But comparing the safety of human drivers to driverless vehicles is complex and not always as straightforward as it seems. Everyone wants to believe that there's a direct comparison between what self-driving cars can do and what humans can do. Every year, humans generate trillions of miles in America, and self-driving cars only generate millions. And it's been long understood that the self-driving cars companies will have to generate around 275 million miles before any of their data can be considered seriously in terms of predicting their actual safety levels. And we know that the computer vision in all autonomous vehicles hallucinates. It sees things that aren't there. We can see it in the data. Self-driving cars are getting rear-ended two times more often than your average human is getting rear-ended. We know for a fact that the higher speed you are in, regardless of whether the car is a self-driving car or a human-driven car, the more likely it is that you're going to be seriously injured or killed in an accident. And indeed, this is where the real risk is. And we know that Waymo is not operating at highway speeds. I think that they're, they're doing the right thing by not making the cars available on the highways right now. There are a lot of operational domain problems that can cause self-driving cars from being successful everywhere across the country. But could we see shuttles? Sure, I think the self-driving shuttles that do limited routes, that have a lot of extra sensors, maybe in the roadway, maybe in the infrastructure, are also a reality. So I don't think we're not gonna get there, we're there. You know, Waymo has proved it. Waymo has proved that you can have self-driving cars. But what remains to be shown is, can you really have them anywhere all the time? I do not think so, at least not until we solve the hallucination problem. Uh, and I'm not even sure we need to. Maybe the reality is staying in the slow speed local regions, if that provides the most benefit, to the community, then that's awesome. So while the future of ride hailing may not be a completely driverless one, or at least not anytime soon, robo taxis are here to stay. It's clear that rolling them out safely is key to making them a real alternative to human drivers. Thank you for watching. For more information, go to mashable.com.